Well, good morning. Uh, good seeing everyone today. <clears throat> my, my voice is a little scratchy today for, for one reason or another. Um, I'm sure I'll get through just fine. I got my hot cup of water today. Um, I can't get to my announcement. All right. Just as I figured. So uh, today we'll be uh, celebrating Christ the King Sunday. So uh, we celebrate as uh, God is Lord of all uh, the earth, which is always good news because our Lord is a good God and and not only wants what's good for him, but also wants what's good for his people. Um, And as his people, how do we serve him? Um, We uh, make sure we um, are good stewards with, with what he has. And uh, not only with our personal lives, which is this one's more for personal reflection and gratitude to my king. This was available as a sign-in. You're welcome to pick one up if you haven't gotten one. Or, um, again, it's only for your own personal reflection. Uh, The other thing is the volunteer form. Of course, everyone's kind of already got figured out what they want to volunteer and don't want to volunteer for. However, uh, we will need another elder at um, the beginning of next year. And so um, as a church, we can together pray about who that all should be and see if we have to reorganize some of the uh, leadership positions in order to get that all filled out. But uh, uh, I think that's all I've got for today's announcement. You got one more. I do have one more. Oh, yes. If anyone's interested in uh, the notes to the last song for today's worship, just a closer walk with Lee. Um, Mike has one in the back. But of course, the words are on the screen. And, and then next Sunday, we'll have uh, the bapti- three baptisms for the Fleming family. Uh, Deidre's uh, daughter, Tom's daughter, and Joe's um, youngest daughter, even though she's a, she's a, a fair amount older. And they said just... Uh, if it wasn't one thing, it was another. <laughs> so a few number of years later, here they are. Everyone else getting baptized. We'll get this one baptized too. <laughs> um, and uh, there won't be a celebration afterwards, as it'll be at Deidre's place. But at least for the church, for her family, there will be. But um, I said that they've got it taken care of. I know that that'd be a question, but I'm sure just your presence here is uh, enough to celebrate with them. Anything else? All right. Our newsletters will be uh, handed to you and, um, as you leave. Don't let me forget that, as holiday season is here. Um, let us go ahead and uh, worship God on, on this uh, Christ the King Sunday. Uh, crown him with many crowns. Hymn number 525. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But God has taken our sins and made them upon Jesus. We pause to privately confess specific shortcomings to God our Father. O oh Lord, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sins I know and am ashamed, but some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Our good shepherd Jesus knows you. He has heard you and forgives you. He gives you eternal life, and he promises that you will never perish. No one can snatch me from his hand. Amen. Let's read responsively Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters. Mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord is, is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness benefits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may preserve in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. Our first reading is found in Daniel, chapter 7, various verses. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was like, it was white, like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is found in Revelations chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who were pierced, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. 
I tell you the truth, generation, this generation will not certainly pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servant in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, you may be seated as we sing the hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Here are the words from the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, the 13th verse. Daniel says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And so who is this Ancient of Days? Have you heard of this name before? Daniel was one of many of the people from Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel, who were brought to the kingdom of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had destroyed Judah and brought Judah's finest people to become servants for his kingdom. Apparently, Daniel was not only smart, but he was also good-looking. For the king had approved for Daniel and some others with these qualities to work for him and his royal team. Now, Daniel's first new role wasn't easy for him. He wasn't able to eat and test out all the food the king wanted him to eat. For not all of the food was kosher. But the king still saw him as a valuable member and found a way to keep him. Daniel was blessed with the gift of interpreting dreams. And so when the king had a dream that was difficult to interpret, the officials found Daniel so that he would interpret the dream for the king. Oftentimes, the dream would ask Nebuchadnezzar to lead with humility. And the king learned that God was telling him that the God of the Jews was the true ruler of the world and not Nebuchadnezzar. And so then Nebuchadnezzar would then adjust his way of ruling accordingly. But Nebuchadnezzar seemed to be a king that was forgetful. And he had forgot that the God of the Jews is indeed the supreme ruler. For a time came when he made a large golden statue for his civilians to worship. But then three Jewish people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, would not bow down and worship this false idol. So Nebuchadnezzar had these three people thrown into the fiery furnace. And the three faithful Jews survived through God's gracious saving. For God provided an angel to protect these faithful servants from being burned. And Nebuchadnezzar saw what a great miracle had been done by God's hand. So he then orders his people to worship the God of the Jews, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, instead of his own gods. But then sometime later, forgetful Nebuchadnezzar is encouraged by his advisors to sign a law that no one should pray to anyone except him, the king. And Nebuchadnezzar agrees. So then this new law written, written to trap Daniel, gets put into place. And Daniel eventually gets charged for worshiping the God of the Jews. And then Daniel's punishment then is to be killed by being put into the lion's den. But then another miracle occurs. The lions didn't devour Daniel. Once again, God sends an angel to save his people. The angel kept the mouths of the lions shut, and Daniel was not harmed. And once again, Nebuchadnezzar orders that all the people fear the God of the Jews, the God of Daniel. Now, would you be comfortable in living 
under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. It seems like every day you'd wake up to a new rule to follow. One day your friends become your enemies, and then the next your enemies become your friends. And from someone I've talked to who worked in politics, he said that's just how politics are played. But I can't imagine this life this lifestyle, for it must become exhausting. But yet, there are politicians who hold to this lifestyle as they make it their lifelong career. But imagine you are a Jewish exile in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. How are you feeling about your future? The inconsistency, I'd imagine, would make you feel very uncomfortable. After all, you're still not in the promised land. You have a powerful king who doesn't seem to know what law to enforce, and it seems to change by whatever is popular at the time. Is Nebuchadnezzar one day going to sign another law to try to get rid of all the Jews? But then God gives Daniel this vision. The vision says, uh, Thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from him before from before him. Thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. Who is the Ancient of Days? It is God. God is pictured as one seated on a chariot throne, just as Ezekiel saw him. A symbol, and then a river of fire is flowing constantly from him. A symbol of the burning zeal that would destroy his enemies and rescue his people. But this God does not judge haphazardly or unfairly, but is always right and just. This God is dependable, and he is the supreme ruler over all the earth. God gives Daniel this vision to comfort those who are in exile, that no matter what happens to the Jews, God's will and authority will be the one that will win in the end. Now, what about us Gentiles? How are we to benefit from this vision of God? Well, as long as we belong to and worship the God of the Jews, God's promises for the Jews will also be extended to us. God promises that he is an authority and that no matter what happens to those who, f who follow him, they will indeed be rescued. How will it look when God rescues his people? God gives Daniel this vision. With the clouds of heaven, there will come, like, there will come one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. Can you imagine standing before God? And what do you think God would say or think of you as you stood before him? Well, he wouldn't say, welcome to my kingdom because you've earned it. No one is worthy to get into heaven. So then who will be worthy for us? 
Of course, it's Jesus. And do you remember what Jesus said when he was arrested the day before his crucifixion? As Jesus was brought before the Jewish council, the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man, he did at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And what does the book of Revelation say about Jesus? It says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and is to come, the Almighty. But earlier in the book of Revelation, it says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This praise to God is about Jesus who has freed us. He has freed us from not only living in this troubled world, but has also freed us from our own sins that bring more trouble into the world. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, our sins are paid for, and we are free to live in God's eternal kingdom. For Jesus' perfect blood covers our imperfect life. And because Jesus has done all the work for us, for all who believe he is the Savior, he will rescue us all, and our sins will be no more. As God has also revealed to Daniel and to Jesus, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. And so because Jesus was perfect for us, and, so that, and because we are right with God, we now stand before the Ancient of Days as innocent. And on the Day of Judgment, Jesus will claim for us to be his own. And whatever trouble we are dealing with today, whether it's Prompting something from someone else or something from ourselves. Our troubles will be no more because we will be in God's great and amazing eternal kingdom forever. Let us worship and praise the God who by his great and supreme power saves us. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus. Amen. That's time we now collect our offering. Kingdoms rise and fall. There is still one king reigning over all. So I will not fear, for this truth remains that my.
Let us pray. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, in this present life of sin and suffering, your holy church longs for the return of Christ. Give us grace to make a good confession and strength to stand firm in the faith, ever watchful for his coming in glory and power. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Gracious God, bestow strength and steadfastness on all the pastors and missionaries of your church, that in these gray and latter days, your little flock may be nurtured and built up into the praise of Christ, who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Lord, in, you, in your mercy. Lord. Most merciful God and Father, give grace to your holy church throughout the world that she may serve you with reverence and awe and endure strong faith to the end. Lord, in your mercy. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, in humility, your only begotten Son stood before governors and kings and was accused unjustly for our sake. Defend the cause of the weak and those who have no voice in our society, particularly the unborn, the poor, and the homeless. Give the government of our nation the, the wisdom to serve its citizens and strive for fairness and justice. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, with all creation, we look in ear expectation toward our final redemption at the revelation of your Son. Until that day, give us strength, especially to those who are weak. Give them patience and hope, and grant the weak healing and aid for whatever they struggle with, especially to those who we now name to you silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory and honor and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We now finish with the song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee.